considering life and finance, he led us, and I was privileged to be a part of that, when we spoke about life and love, when we ministered to your marriages, your family life, in case you were absent, you might want to run back to YouTube, so listen to those messages. They will bless you. And this is what we're going to be doing as we wrap up this year. And even as we start 2025, that year 2025 is loaded. Get ready to soar. Because it will be one of your best. I thought your amen would be very exciting. So we're beginning a series, and I'm honored to start this series, Life and Finance. Remember, if you say, we don't even understand why these pastors talk about money. Okay, really? Life has been structured in such a way that there are things you will never ever have access to without money. It's not pastor's fault. It's the way life is structured. And as long as you live on earth, you need to understand that. Acts chapter number 9 and verse number 6. There are things you don't know until you are taught. Jesus said to Paul, Arise, go to the city. It shall be told thee what thou must do. There are things we don't know until we are taught. And I'm starting the teaching this morning about life and finance. And the topic that I want to handle this morning is the mystery called life. The mystery called life. This thing called life, what is it? What is a mystery? A mystery is something that is difficult to understand. So we say things like, God is mysterious. When we don't understand something, we call it a mystery. Ephesians chapter 5 tells us marriage is a mystery. It's truly a mystery. Because two total strangers show up and they fall in love. Strangers. It's a mystery. They fall in love so much that they even exempt others. If you have experienced love, you will know it's a mystery. So, when we don't understand something, we call it a mystery. This mystery called life. What is a mystery? It is something that seems impossible to explain. That's what we call a mystery. Remember, we're looking at the mystery called life. Under the series of life and finance. Something that seems impossible to understand, to explain. A mystery is a puzzle. It's a puzzle. A secrecy. It talks about obscurity. Not known, not understood. It's a riddle. It's a question. A mystery is an unsolved problem. A poser. Like a closed door. It speaks about impenetrability. Something that is difficult to penetrate. That's a mystery. And we're looking at life as a mystery this morning. Unfathomableness. Something you can't fathom. And we say that a lot about God. Who can fathom you, God? So is life. It's nebulous. That means it's unclear. It's cloudy. It's hazy. It's life. You look at life sometimes and you just sigh. <sighs> life, Sha. Ah, this life. Life is like, you know those padlocks that have combination code. Sometimes zero, zero, zero. Sometimes 717. 
Sometimes three through five, depending. Some of you will even use your birthday codes. Those keys. That's how life is. If you have or you know the code that opens that padlock, it will be open. The way life runs, this is physics now. The light that comes from Kanji Dam, if it goes straight to your telephone, it will burn, it will smash, it will destroy that telephone and the carrier. That's the reason they have what you call a transformer. So the light comes, it is broken down, it is stepped down, and then it enters a, plat, a place called a transformer, like the one we have outside there in church. It is broken down in fixes. It enters that thing and it gets to your house. And there's a tiny spot that has maybe two spots or whatever that you can put your plug and connect your phone. If you wire your house according to the code of electricity, if you wire your house according to the code of electricity, when it is time to switch on the light, you will not go there and be begging. In Jesus' name, light come forth. Every witch that is against this light, you will not need to fast for 40 days. If you wire your house according to the code of electricity, that's exactly how life runs. If you wire your life according to the code of success, you will not need to be binding and loosing every demon. We want to start the service now. Every demon inside the microphone. I jokingly told Mrs. Oke this morning, I said the handsome money that your husband transferred to you, go and get a battery with it so that you will not be needing to jumpstart it every morning. You will not need prayer. In fact, you will, your testimony will be something else. And I wasn't trying to rubbish. I was just trying to teach her a lesson. That's how life runs. There are things we pray about that we're just disturbing God. In fact, the prayers are not entering heaven. Because when God created you, I don't want to jump my notes, but I need to say this. When God created you, he gave you what is called modus operandi, which is your brain. There are 8 billion people on earth. So that we will not be disturbing God. He gave us the brain. And brain is brain. On your boss brain is not superior to your brain. Forget about our conditioning. When we were young and we see any white person, we'll be attracted. Oh, you boy, we'll be running after. They conditioned us. And up till now, even though we took our independence, we didn't take freedom. That's why we must still put weave on. Because they could really colonize us. That's why I'm speaking in English. Because when you want to colonize a people, you colonize their culture. That's why we still wear suits. Till Jesus comes. It's the truth. They took our language. It's so bad that when we were growing up, our teachers would tell us that if you ever speak in vernacular, your name should be written down. That was the chief colonialist master. Colonial master. So, and you know one thing? Life does not take permission from you before throwing information at you. Life doesn't. You are conditioned without your permission. All of us. So as we get into adulthood, we begin to unlearn and relearn. Like what we do. That's why when you got born again, God did not take you to heaven. Romans chapter 12, beginning from verse 1, you begin to transform. You begin to renew because it was your spirit that got born again. Your soul, your mind has been conditioned by your teacher, by your pastor, by your parents, by experiences, verbal programming, modeling, specific incidents. So you have to start on learning. And relearning is the same thing with finance. I'm taking you on a journey in this series that we have begun. 
and hello everybody we understand what we are teaching you we understand when you say we understand something we understand it this issue of finance my husband and I understand it so if there's someone you need to listen to listen to us so that it will no longer be a mystery to you if you wire your house according to the code of electricity you will not go before the switch and be binding and losing and say in Jesus name in Jesus name I must have money Jesus would you go to me oh Jesus mm -mm. money is not a miracle it is a reward we teach you it's a reward you have your modus operandi anything in which you will succeed in life there are three main things there is awareness there is belief there are principles within the model if you're going to become a lawyer we have a son here an SAN here even though he's he was aware that he wanted to be a lawyer a barrister he had belief in himself and in his lecturers but he obeyed the principles within the model of law he wasn't writing fine arts when he was writing his exam he wasn't drawing the picture of Chinua Achebe in constitutional law there are principles within each model that's how life runs if you understand what we want to start teaching you, you won't envy anybody and you will never be poor again I didn't pray Understanding, my people are destroyed. Not for lack of prayer and fasting. For lack of awareness, knowledge. And remember, there are things we will never know except we are taught. Mystery. Is that not the way we have been raised to see and relate with God? When God prefers that we come boldly, Hebrews 4, 16, onto the throne of grace. Because we are so used to Ogun, the wicked God, and Oshun, and uh, fire, 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 Oya, and what have you. Is that not the way we have been trained to come before God, that when you come to church, you must be sanctimonious? Why? Why are they dancing like that? Why? What to do? Shh. Why are they jumping up? What's wrong with them? What's going on? The noise is too much. You better come back to planet Earth. And understand what we're talking about. Because culture affects your conditioning. Mm. We were taught the fear of God but not the love of God. So we dwell more in the fear of God. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not wear jewelry, thou shalt not this, thou shalt be tight, thou shalt, thou shalt, thou shalt. But not the love of God. If you love him, so I'm not berating that. If you love God, you will not deliberately want to hurt him. That's how my husband and I raised our kids. We raised them from the perspective of positivity. Not that is coming, that is coming. Run, 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 come here, come here. Mm -mm. Even when we want to beat them, I also will explain from the perspective of positivity and possibility. We're looking at life this morning, the mystery of life, the mystery called life. What is a mystery? I just tried to explain. So let's move on to life. Something that is difficult to understand. Seems impossible to explain. So you wonder why a one-day-old baby dies while a 90-year-old woman is still alive. Is that not a mystery? Why a woman will say, I went to bed as a woman and woke up as a widow. And you look at her and say, oh, she's, she's young. Why do you explain that? How do you explain why cancer will hit somebody that is very useful and leave a madman? Mystery. While an irresponsible drunk and an abuser is walking around 
a cancer will hit someone that is so useful. Mystery called life. Many things have conditioned us to begin to see life as a mystery. But Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 7. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. Nostrils. The two. Nostrils. The breath of life. And man became a living soul. Every breath that you breathe. Everybody please. Maybe your palm or your the back of your palm. Just breathe into it. Breathe on it. You better breathe. It's a privilege to be able to breathe. Every breath is a blessing. Breathe. That's a blessing. Breathe. That's money. Breathe. That's wealth. Breathe. That's wisdom. You're breathing. Every breath is golden. Every breath is life. No breath is a mistake. So every time you breathe, God breathed into you. Is God a failure? No. So how can you be a failure? How can you be poor? When we get to the fellowship, we will explain how we got, well, how people became poor. We all became poor. There are a minimum of 25 things that led us there. I'm not touching that today. We became, we were not, when he breathed into us, he didn't breathe poverty. He didn't breathe sickness. And he breathed into the two nostrils. He says nostrils, plural. He breathed into us. Every breath is a blessing. And Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man when he had formed. So after he breathed into you, the next thing he did was to plant a garden and to put you there. We're talking about finance. And we're tracing this from the Bible. God breathed wisdom to you. He breathed ability to you. He breathed gold into you. He breathed money into you. He breathed life into you. And then he puts you in a garden and says, dress it and keep it. And inside that garden, treasures. Let me jump and say, to be wealthy, find your garden. I only jumped. Let's continue. You were born naked, but you were not born empty. Look at your organs. Even your organs, a mystery. The tiniest, the smallest organ of the body is the pineal gland. And it is located near the center of the brain. Isn't God amazing? The largest organ is your skin. The fattest organ is your brain. Your brain has 60% fat. We're talking about the mystery called life. And we're connecting it to finance. Life and finance. So your brain is your modus operandi. Your brain is the gift that God Put on your inside to operate here on earth. Your brain is what God has given you to create the life you want. <laughs> nobody is the reason for your success or failure. People can encourage you, people can inspire you, but nobody. That is why the entitlement mentality. It's wrong. And you cannot afford to continue to feed it. Beloved, help people, but don't inherit their problem. Remember I jokingly tell you, the day you got married, the day you slept with your, with your wife, your child told you that he will need school fees. If nobody told you. So, six years down the line, three years down the line, 17 years down the line, if you are begging for school fees, you didn't live well. I don't care, you can stone me, but it's the truth. And why is she talking like that? Is it not because God has helped her? The same God can help you. And I don't owe you anything. 
If I give you anything, it's because I chose to give you. Stop dangling entitlement mentality and stop blackmailing me. Stop blackmailing people that help you. And, and after all, is it not because of us that God bless us? No. It's not because of you, it's because of me. God bless me because of me. And gave me a brain to decide how I spend my money. It's the truth. It will be bitter, but it's the truth. That's why ungrateful people are evil. I don't owe you nothing. I do not owe you nothing. Because you have between 10 and 14 billion cells in your brain just like I do. So go use it. Go use it. And when God raises people to help you, honor them. And stop letting your body language look as if eh, she's talking about me. Oh. Oh, we are not saying alone oh, anywhere. Oh, no one does not say they are God. It's a, it's a language of a frustrated person. You to go and look for how are you are shiri with now. Rubbish. We speak the truth in this church. It's an institution given by God. And we will give an account unto God how we pastored you. We stand on the truth. This is the truth. Life is not just you being beggarly. Every time I step here, I try to make you angry. So that your life can be better. I'm sure some people will not like me after this service. But it doesn't matter. Do you know that there are footprints on the moon? I didn't say in the moon. On the moon. Some human beings like you and I went to the moon and they put footprints there. When America landed on the moon, America broadcast that song. How great thou art. How great thou art. To the world. And as we speak now, scientists have discovered that the footprints that are on the moon will still last, before they can be erased, will still last 100 million years. Human beings went there. And as we speak now, there are people in the space. Did you see that woman? They want to vote. Were you not aware when Richard Branson said they want us to give money? If you can give $250,000 or you can give whatever thousand dollars, they want to go and build hotel in the moon. We live in Akura, but please wake up. The world is moving. We are not your local pastors. We are informed. And we bring this to your notice. Did people not say that no matter could fly in the air. The right brothers, they flew for 12 seconds or 14 seconds and we are still flying. See what they have given to the world. Everything you see on earth today, hear me, is the, uh, the expression of an unrejected idea. It came to somebody's mind and the person did not reject it. Why are you rejecting ideas? I'm really jumping this morning. Everything you see, Pastor Lali, somebody was tired of sitting on the ground and gave us the chair. How can I be sitting on the ground like this every time and thought they were giving us the chair? Please sit down, sir. Then somebody looked at the chair and said, two people can sit now. And give us the couch. The couch. Somebody said, no, no, no. You can lie down. And give us the three-seater. And then somebody said, no, no, no. Let's make it more beautiful. So they gave us that. The ones we buy from Dubai. You get some homes and you hey, see Shia. This one is not Shia. It's Shia. You jump on the plane. Carrying 300 and something people. 
including corpses and loaves. And you know how Nigerians can do by my side, by my side. That's called economic class. And you are wondering, this thing is still suspended in there. My husband took me on a, on a ship cruise. I think two years ago. I didn't want to come back to Nigeria. <laughs> are we going back home? He said, yes, babe, we are going. I said, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. About 3,000 minimum of force were on that ship. 12 restaurants. See, mountain of food. Swimming pools. Theater. Every night, we would go to one room. The ship was moving on. We spent seven days. One man that we met said he, he had spent 32 days. Another one said 50-something days. That he always accumulates his leave. And you are just clapping in church. And we are telling you and you are saying, hey, hey, hello, it's your long. Come on, wake up. God brought Felix and Funky Adejumo. We represent him. He has brought the world to you. You may not be able to go to some places. We are here. We are loaded. Telling you this is how to live. Don't reject these ideas that we are talking to you about. You can be better than this. Life is a mystery. But if you have the code. And we are helping you with the codes. Beginning from this morning. How to be successful. How to understand finance. How to be wealthy. You have prayed. We thank God for you. But now, let's begin to dissect how these things work. You are not a mere consumer. You are a creator. Genesis 1. 1. The beginning God created. Genesis 1.26. He now made you. Have you ever asked yourself, or that woman, have you ever asked yourself, why did they call it Scripture? I they call the Bible a scripture. Look at the word script. If you are in drama, if you are an actor, how do we? If you are an actor, they will tell you, take the script and know your line. So why is it called a script? Why is the Bible a script? We are acting. Know your line. In the script. Let me break it down for you. Listen. God's name is I am. So anytime, Remy, anytime you say I am poor, the angels will scream in heaven, treason! Treason! You know the meaning of treason? want to take over the government. Anytime you say I am sick because that is God's name. There's a noise in heaven. Treason! I am cannot be poor. I am cannot be sick. And you don't know that you are creating. I am no wonder the Bible says, let the weak say. Choir, know your script if you want to be worthy. The reason you don't have what you want is because you have been acting another script. The script says you are blessed. Why are you saying I'm confused? That's how words start to. Your money is not in your bank account. Your money is here. This is where it starts. You look at your pocket. It doesn't match the script. Master your line. From today, help me tell your neighbor, just know your line. Ask another neighbor, have you ever acted a drama before? Uh -huh. Know your line. Help me ask that neighbor, what does your line say? I am blessed. I am wealthy. Wealth and riches are in my house. The devourer is rebuilt for my sake. My barns are filled. And I am not trying to excite 
guides you. If you will just understand what I'm saying, this is how we got here. You can't do it your way. You can't be wealthy my way. You can't be wealthy your way. It has to be this way. This is where it starts from. Know your script. You get into your house. You walk like a king. Now, this, have you ever asked yourself, why did Psalm 8 say, what is man? I read English language, so when I read the Bible, I really think about some things. Why did the Bible not say, Napoleon, who is man? The Bible says, what is man? Because you were made from dust. And you don't use who for none. What do you call these things, darling? Inanimate. So, what is man? It was when he breathed into you that you became who? You are a what? The difference is the breath in you. Stop wasting the script. So when you hear my father, Bishop, you don't go say, I can never be poor. And you are criticizing him. Is something wrong with you? The man is telling you his script. He has mastered his line. So he said it every time. Even when there was nothing to see about him. Even when his works watching didn't have air condition. I can never be poor. Is it, uh, has it not come? And so people sat there and they were, instead of them to master their own lines, they were criticizing his line. And as he was rising, they were going down. Rising. That's why you can never attract what you attack. If this is the only thing I can do in this service today as we need the foundation for wealth. Your money is not in your purse. Your money is not in your wallet. Your money is not in your bank account. Your money starts here. Stop saying, I want low. You are pushing wealth. Money says where it is invited. Money says where it is honored. Stop saying, I want that go to the Stop! You know why we do coaching? You know why we come to church every time? Because when you don't maintain a house, it becomes dilapidated. That's why the Bible talks about faith coming by hearing and hearing. You can't be hearing something like this every Sunday, every Sunday, and not be wealthy. You get to what they call unconscious competence. You need to hear this because, my dear, farming is not only in Nigeria, it's in the world. You see what is happening in England? You see what is happening in America? It's happening everywhere. I was in England for a few, you know, a few days back. It is happening everywhere. It's not peculiar to Nigeria. Therefore, master your line. I give you three months. If you will believe in my belief in you and follow this script that I'm teaching you, you'll be looking for me as FFA. Excuse me, I can't explain how it happened. This is how it starts. And I'm laying the foundation for what we want to be teaching you in the fellowship. So let me tell you a story and maybe a wrap up. I still have some time. I'll share. Let me shock you. One of the ways by which you can have money or be wealthy or succeed is when you stay in the vibration of gratitude. I will break that down in that class. There's what we call the frequency of gratitude. It's a frequency. It's a multiplier. I love Jesus. John chapter 5. John chapter 6. John chapter 11. He gave thanks and broke the bread. And the bread multiplied. John chapter 11. Father, I thank you. You always hear me. Lazarus, come forth. I love Jesus. He didn't come to destroy the laws. He came to amplify actually and to fulfill. It's what we call the vibration, the frequency. I'm a coach and you can tell from what I'm sharing with you today. And I'm put, putting everything in the Bible. The Bible is a complete book. I'm going to tell you a story now. And tell you two things. 
But I don't want to overload you. We we'll see in November. Then we we'll get to that class, and then the bishop will be giving you some foundational things too. The Bible is complete. There's no aspect of your life that you won't find in the Bible. It's only a fool that will say there is no God. Let me share the story of the Queen of England with you. Queen Elizabeth II. I googled while I was preparing for this message. And I want to tell you a bit of her story. She was one of my heroes. I loved her. I have her pictures everywhere. Because it's a matter of time. You will look like what you look at. That's how I roll. Sometimes I go online. I don't know how to do Facebook. I don't do it. It wastes my time. I don't do it. I do Instagram. Because I use it both for my business and then for whatever I do. Sometimes you find me on Instagram. I can decide that I'm going to spend 30 minutes or one hour. I'm looking for wealthy people. I'm not looking for those that are doing their bomb bomb like this and I scroll. They're not in my tribe. I'm not looking for those whose cleavages. They are not. I'm looking for what I want to look like. I'm scrolling. Whether she's born again or not, it doesn't matter. Whether she's the 15th wife, I don't care. That's not my business. I'm looking for what I want to look like. I'm looking for Elon Musk's mother. How she raised those billionaires. I'm looking for Eliganza's wife. I don't care what you feel about her. There are Christians that I look for. But the people I look for, they are not only Christians. I'm studying them. I look at their bags. I look at how they carry themselves. I look at the conferences they attend. I look at so many things. It's a matter of time. You will look like what you look at. Instead of sitting down in your shop gossiping, tearing down people, you're wasting your time. The people you are criticizing, they don't even know you exist. They do not know you exist. They don't have your time. They are busy self-developing. They are busy. You want to catch up with them, they are gone. They are gone. They are gone. And sometimes it looks as if they are, they are bragging. They are not bragging. They are standing on truth. Truth. Nobody's in the front by accident. My husband is, is a witness of how I study. And I write. If you see where I make my notes, and I've translated that to my law program, as I'm studying law, because how you show up for one thing is how you show up for everything. How you handle one thing is how you handle everything. I understand that the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere of our brains are a part of them, are activated when you write, not when you type on computer, what, not when you type on your iPad, when you write with your finger. Psychologists have discovered that there is something that is activated in your brain when you write. So I write a lot. I sent my sister to the market yesterday to go get me 48 exercise books. 48. I write and write and study and study. You can't meet me and I will speak with you for five minutes and something will not shift in your life. I'm investing into my life too much. My mates must be scarce. It may sound like I'm bragging, but it's the truth. It's the truth. My husband looked at me yesterday and said, who will not be proud of you? For him to have said that, I know he saw something. Not just sitting down and looking 57 at 27. Stop. Because you have three children. You are your grandmother. You are in a competition. We don't know who is even older. Stop. Let me tell you her story. I 
I said something. Find out your garden and know it. My husband and I were trying to buy a property two days ago. And he said to me, what do you think, darling? I said, darling, but you know that that's your area. That's your area of strength. You lead in that area. So I follow you. If I was not married to him, I will look for an agent. Know your garden. The reason why some of you are struggling is because you are in the wrong garden. You want to do everything. You don't know how to delegate. Well, I think I'm jumping. Let's talk about Her Royal Majesty, the Queen. While I talk about her, please keep in mind a scripture that I will show you later. Okay. Queen Elizabeth II, Queen Elizabeth II, her parents were Prince Albert and Lady Elizabeth. Please listen to her story. Her grandfather was King George. Her uncle, Edward VIII, Edward VIII, abdicated the throne in Queen Elizabeth's father's favor. Get the story very well. The grandfather had children. One of them, the grandfather was a king. One of them was supposed to be a king. And then he abdicated. He, he left the throne. When you say somebody abdicated, he said, no, I don't, want, I don't want the crown. He abdicated the throne and gave it to Queen Elizabeth's father. Please listen. Then, Queen Elizabeth got married to her distant cousin, Lieutenant Philip, her husband. In 1951, Queen Elizabeth's father's health declined. So she began to represent him in meetings, conferences. And then in January 1952, she and her husband, she just got married, she and her husband went on a tour. They were going to Australia and New Zealand but they decided to stop over in a small village called Sagana. If I don't pronounce it well, in Kenya. Please listen. She was going to represent her father. She traveled with her husband. They were going to Australia and New Zealand. But they decided to visit Kenya, a small village in Kenya. While they were there, news came that her father had died. On February 6, 1952. So, they flew back from Kenya. The moment her father died, she transitioned and became the queen. I deliberately paused because I want to tell you something. The moment her father died. Queen Elizabeth transitioned and became the queen of England. Till she died, every time they spoke about her or she spoke about herself, you will hear Queen Elizabeth II by the grace of God. That was the cliche around her name. Queen Elizabeth II by the grace of God. The source -so -so of Great Britain and Ireland. Remember that story that I told you. Now look at Second Chronicles. Beg your pardon. Second Corinthians chapter eight, verse nine. I want to wrap up now. Second Corinthians chapter eight, verse nine. Hear what the Bible says. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Now look up. By reason of somebody's death, Elizabeth became a queen. By reason of Jesus' death, you became rich. That may 
be too much for you to assimilate. You may know it theoretically. So if, if I became rich, why is it that I can't pay my child's fees? Why is it that we look at the principles within the model? Because somebody died. Elizabeth was not <laughs> a part of it. If the uncle did not abdicate the throne, could come? So look at what happened. Because her father died, she automatically became the queen. Hear this. Women, hear this. Women, hear this. Queen Elizabeth did not become a queen because her husband was a king. So I feel that I say, if I, once I get married like this, my husband will just be taking care of me. My husband should be the one that should just be. My husband should be the one. What are you going to be doing for the man? And there are women whose husbands are not kings and they are queens. Queens in the banking industry. Queens in spiritual matters. Some of them, their husbands are not even born again. So why are you telling me that it's because your husband, your husband is the one delaying you, that's why you're not serving God. That's why I come late to church. You can be a queen even though your husband is not a king. When Jesus died, that's what 2 Corinthians 8, 9 tells me. We became rich. I'm talking to your psyche this morning. I may not sound too so religious, but I'm, I'm something spiritual. If you understand what I'm saying. And we're talking about finance. See the stories I'm telling. But that's it. Wealth is more than pounds and dollars and naira. Those things I just mentioned are expressions of it. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Why would the Bible differentiate? Wealth and riches. Wealth speaks about every aspect of your life. Riches talks about money, gold, cattle, houses, cars. So God expects you to have the two. She was in a village. She had a little prospect. She was in a village in Kenya when the news came. So it doesn't matter where you are. The point at which you are operating as I'm speaking now, you, you can transition from the back to the front. Just like that woman said she went to bed and woke up as a widow. That's negative. You can transition. Did not happen to Joseph. If you just understand this. Wealth is attracted. You attract it. We'll break that down for you. Somebody's death made us rich. That's our story. Like Queen Elizabeth too. She was in the village when her status changed. So, she became the longest. I mean, she reigned for 70 years. She surpassed everyone. Life. I tried to look at the meaning of that Genesis 8. Make your part of First Corinthians. Second Corinthians 8, 9. You be he became poor that through his poverty you might be rich. So I tried to look at what's the meaning of rich. Hear what I discovered. The word rich. The Bible put it there. The Bible did not say, you know, the Bible said rich. So be rich means having a great deal of money or assets. It's in the Bible. Oh. Existing in plentiful quantities, abundance, wealthy, affluence, copious, profuse, substantial, well off. Loaded, deep pockets, rolling in money. You can Google it, you'll find that's the meaning of rich, prosperous, well to do, feel the rich, property. Those of you that are still tenants, I'm chasing you out in 2025. You become landlords and landladies. Yeah, you better believe this. Stinking rich, lavishly appointed, classy, upmarket, elegant, posh, overflowing, inexhaustible, plenteous, super abundant. We know this theoretically. 
So when the Bible says you will lend to nations, I did a study and I discovered that there was a time in the life of America when some rich people loaned money to America. J.P. Morgan. And when you look at most of these people, they are Christians. How many of you have enough that you can loan to Nigeria? No, no, that you can loan to your local government. You see where we are going? Genesis 17 verse 1. Walk before me and be that perfect. It's not the word perfect as we think. It's about maturity. That's where we are going. Deuteronomy 28, that's where we are going. So when you begin to hear this over and over and over and over again, you will be tired of poverty. Whether you realize it or not, all these things are, I've shared with you today. They will, there are seeds that I have planted and the Holy Spirit will want them. They will jump out of your spirit. You may not even be conscious. One day when you see someone that is where you say, you remember if FFA said, you'll be wondering, how did that? Okay, walk on church. That's how it works. You are, we are exposing you to truth, not fact. The fact of your life may say you don't have it. Facts change. It is truth that does not change. You are on your way there. The absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. When you plant something, it doesn't mean it will grow the same day. You are on your way. Awareness is the starting point. Once you understand whether you are a student, whether you are working, whether you are a farmer, whether you are to fish, whatever you are doing, just be conscious of this. Psalm 1 verse 3, whatsoever he doeth, shall prosper. I can't be a student and fail. Whatsoever he doeth, I can't sell pure water and not prosper. Whatsoever he doeth. I can't be a bricklayer and not have money. Whatsoever he doeth. I can't sell plantain and fail. Whatsoever he doeth. This is what I have brought to you in church this morning on this Thanksgiving day that you begin to think. There's a book called Think and Grow Rich. It's not a book you read. It's a book you do. And you cannot finish that book in a lifetime. I've been studying that book for seven years. I still, sometimes I'm, I'm stuck. You can think and be rich. And the fact that you think you must work to be rich does not mean there are not people that are thinking and being rich. This is where it starts. It's just one point I gave you today. This is where it starts from. And no matter the level at which you are operating, I want to welcome you to the next level. Next level. That's where we are going. Yes, I thank God for the millions, but let's move it up. You know one of the reasons why you must prosper? There are people that are depending on you. I think it's okay for me to say this. My husband and I bought a land and we decided to give it to a widow. And someone that doesn't want us to mention the name decided to help us to build it. And we started painting yesterday. And we're giving it to that widow. Madam Glory, stand up. She's the one that we're giving it to. Where is she? Her husband, her... <laughs> Come here. Her husband drives the bus in one of our churches. And he passed. And the Lord laid it on Bishop's heart and my heart to relocate her to Akure. She just came less than a month. Now she has a house. Not rented. Anyway, it's not me she's prostrating for. Not rented. You know why we tell you things like this? So that you will understand that we know what we are teaching you. I used to hawk to pay school fees. Hawk. Some of my siblings are here. 
hawk to pay school fees. There was a year Bishop and I gave out, I don't know how many cars. And my darlings, we're not touching your offering. Mm -mm. My husband coached me when we started this ministry. Explained to me how we will live. We will not touch three things. Number one, he will not touch the girls. So there's no story, story about him. We will not touch the glory. So we will continue to be humble and grateful. And we will not touch the gold. There are people that manage your offering. So this was not built with your offering. But whatever God does with us, he can do with you. That's what we're saying. We are telling you, we don't want only one star. We don't want few stars in this ministry. Everybody's a star. That's one widow. This is one of the reasons why God must bless you. It's not for self aggrandizement so that she can kneel down and Madam, it's not me you are kneeling down for. Are you thanking God? Are you praying? It's not me you are kneeling down for. Do you understand? So that people like this stand up. We thank God for you. When we told her a few days ago, she said, Mommy, um, should I cry? Should I, um, should I laugh? Then she went to daddy's picture and said, um, Daddy, should I put you on my neck? This is the reason. If you don't need the money, people like this need it. And that's not the first stone. Others are ongoing. There are people that will just receive keys. Some, some have received keys and they are here looking at me. There are some that will just receive keys. You see, one of the reasons for that fellowship is the kingdom. So don't look at us as if, ha, ah, hey, hey, and nobody, whether you're a dickiness or a pastor, don't come to her and say, hey, we want to help her, thank you. We don't want it. I don't want that. You'll be embarrassed. We don't want it. And please don't take her picture. Don't put it in. You can go, ma. Don't take her picture, uncle. Please, nobody should come and say, hey, she, ah, our we don't want. You know what we want? We want you to also come and tell us that you built a house for somebody. Come and tell us that. We want you to also come and tell us that how many people can't pay their school fees in that nursery school? How many people need empowerment? That's what we want you to do. I don't know if I blessed you today. And thank you. I have not touched the principles. Next Sunday, Bishop will start. We have not taught you how to be wealthy. We're just helping you to, is it dredge, they call it. We're helping you to remove Bobo Idoti so that a new life. So you wake up and you walk with still Zabi. You know you are a possibilitarian. You know this one is not mouth. You know you are not a beggar. You know that all these things that we say, I'm a wealthy possibility. Now, it's not by mouth. You understand. Why will you come to church and you are not able to give offering? And you want to give offering. That's not the life we want for you. That's not how our lives are. And every time I preach, once you see me on this altar, get ready to be angry. That's my role as your bishop's wife to tell you to come up hither there's a life that is better and because we have the God advantage if you are now born again oh my God you have divine assistance you plant a little seed heaven waters it stop thinking poverty stop thinking beggarliness Stop thinking that if somebody doesn't give you, then you can't have. Start thinking. It's a matter of time. It will show. Everybody rise up on your feet today. You are good. You are good. Please change to my key. You are good. You are kind. You are more than this. I'm lost for words. Trying to describe you. Elohim. Your greatness is all I see. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot do. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record to keep in your world. 
of you. And the bishop will be praying for heads of families. It came to my mind, to my spirit this morning. If you are the head of your family, you, you have a wife. Somebody looks up to you. We want to push you to the next level. I thank God for the houses you have built. I thank God for those businesses. But there is more. There's more. Some of you owe people houses. That's your uncle that helped you. Have you built a house for him? Mm -hmm. You thank God for the ones you have built for yourself. The number of children you have is the number of houses minimum that you should have. So you can tell them, that one is for you, that one is for you, that one is for you. For a righteous man liveth an inheritance. And righteousness is not about earring or makeup. We don't want to die the way our parents lived and died until your child sends 10,000. We're changing the trajectory of that. They're calling our children and say, are you okay? Do you need some? Uh, it's just that, okay, okay. I join you, you will pay it back. Take this $10,000. Hey, mommy, hey, daddy. <laughs> That's how we want to live. I don't want you to be praying and praying and praying and praying and praying before you have money. When you should be praying for missionaries and sending money to them, protecting them and praying for Nigeria. I was listening to the vice president of America a few days ago. Maybe because I'm a woman. I don't want to comment too much. But there's no way as a woman you will not want to listen to her. And she said, I support President Biden when on, on sending or instructing the U.S. Army to repel the attacks from Iran against Israel. Listen to what she said. Iran sent 200 and something missiles. And then with a broad smile in her mouth, she said, we defeated the attack. We defeated the attack. That's what it means to be powerful. When with a broad smile in your on your face, you can say, I defeated poverty. You can say, Bishop, sir, the next conference, how much will it cost? Possibilitarians, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. When you can say, I'm for the kingdom. When you can say, sir, we don't, we don't, we, we don't want you to be stressed anymore. Ask the bishop, I told him that a few years ago. We don't want you to be stressed anymore, sir. What do we need? Sir, we know you are paying salaries. How much? Are you enlisting today? <laughs> You're not in agape for nothing. You're on assignment. Young men and women, hear me. We are raising you so you can smile and say we defeated the attack. Somebody's at the hospital that needs something. You can say, hello, Mrs. Adejumo, how much? You want to be able to do that? Let me see your hand up. Young people, I'm talking to you, I'm waiting for you. You will not just match Bishop and I, you will match us and you will overtake us in grand style. That amen is not what I want. Whether you are watching online, we are secure enough to tell you that we want you to match us and overtake us. I hold meetings and I raise offerings. I was in England and I said, no, no, no. I, we are doing another conference. How many of you will give? And they came. I said, excuse me, I didn't say. They said, yes, ma'am. Small, small girls, small, small children. We're going to this. We're going to be sitting with you from the book of Joel chapter 2. We're going to be dissecting it. You are a part of this end move. Agape. 
whether you are old or you are young. We are going up. We are going higher. I'm going to be praying with you. A bishop will be praying with heads of families. Jehovah will lift your heads. I break the backbone of poverty. I command that you leave this realm in business, in spiritual matters, in finance, in life. I push you to your next level. Go forward. Move fast. Go ahead. Run faster. Everybody in this sanctuary are watching online. Be blessed. You will not beg for bread. Life will be very comfortable for you. You will build and live with ease. The God that did it for us will do it for you. These new teachings and this new season, you will manifest. I decree it and I stamp it. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Rub yourself with the prayers. Receive it. Hug yourself. You have moved to the next level. I want your amen to be meaningful. I know you are sober, some of you, but whatever you lack today, you will have plenty of it. Telling my husband recently, I can't remember what we have not sold, what my mother didn't sell. I can't remember. Palm oil, oranges, Gary, anything. That's my past. Everyone in business, stretch your two hands. I bless these hands. Whatever you do, go and prosper. Amen. There will be fatness of the earth. Amen. There will be dew of heaven. Amen. And there will be plenty of corn and wine. Amen. Receive your own portion. Amen. Hug yourself. I'm not wasting your time. I've spent 58 minutes, but I'm praying for you. I'm not wasting your time. I'm listening to heaven. Everyone that is in business, I command help for you. Amen. God will surprise you Amen. and surpass your expectations. Amen. Favor us everywhere. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Uh, you are a woman, but you are the head of your family. Maybe you are widowed, but you are the head of your family. You can join. God bless you. Now listen to me. Now listen to me. Listen. The picture God put in my heart, and I want to show you right now, quickly before I pray. I saw a vehicle. Nothing is wrong with that vehicle. That vehicle has capacity. And the person driving it knows the capacity of that vehicle but is not taking advantage of that vehicle. The word that resonated in my spirit is accelerate. Accelerate. And I was beginning to ask accelerate. He said some people are on the spot. They are not accelerating, and that is the reason why things are not changing for them. Whose fault? 
the fault of the person that is not accelerating. Nothing is wrong with you. You have it, but you are not accelerating. How many of you want to accelerate? How many of you want to gain speed financially? I want you to know that you have it already. Already you have it. All you need to do is accelerate. Your speed is too slow. Accelerate. Put your leg on the throttle. Accelerate. Somebody say accelerate. I can't hear you. Say it again. Say it one more time. Whatever you are doing, accelerate. Whatever. Accelerate. There are automatic vehicles. There are one called manual. You change it to accelerate. There are some vehicles, they have seven gears. Accelerate, just accelerate. Accelerate. I ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, grace to accelerate. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. From today, financially, you will no longer be stranded. Yeah. You will operate beyond the current capacity at which you are operating. Receive that grace. Amen. Not that alone, you will dominate. Amen. Financially, you will dominate. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I release you. Amen. Go and prosper. Amen. Gain speed. Amen. Gain speed. Amen. Gain speed. Amen. From today, nothing hinders you anymore. You will no longer be an insult. Receive that grace right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.